and we're buying parts for these uh, aircraft, all aircraft from China. The departs are effective according to Senator Levin this past week, and so we're putting defective parts in these aircraft, and they're going to they're going to be a hazard if they if they um, come down for any reason or hit something for any reason. And these things are not, um, you know, foolproof. They they have accidents. And they're going to jeopardize the people of the United States because they're going to be carrying bombs. What happens when something goes wrong and these things crash, like the one in Maryland? Well, it sounds like the same mindset of the, the geniuses who decided to build nuclear power plants on, on major fault lines. So That's uh, exactly it. That's exactly it. And this looks like the way that they're moving. They're also using hydrogen drones, and these things are highly explosive as well. And so accidents are going to be happening, and you're going to have small drones who are going to hit larger ones. Sure, yeah, and it's, who's it's, going to keep track of all of these? Yeah, it's only a matter of time, but the more of these things they make up, you know, there's, there's, it's a potential for an accident. Hey, what about the drones that the Obama administration is establishing? I understand there's a fleet of drones in Africa under uh, African sitcom. So now we have UN or NATO armed drones in Africa. Tell us about those. Well, under the last NATO meeting that just occurred this past month, uh, what has happened is that the United States has agreed to arm NATO's drones, uh, give them all this equipment at taxpayers' expense, and for Africa Southcom, they're, they've got these drone ranges that they're, that they're putting up and that they're going to be using drones for surveillance. They're going to be using drones with weapons in countries that we have no war with at all. And we're going to be surveilling people, and there's no debate. There's no public discussion. And so when you're talking about drone ranges uh, in, so in um, South America as well, we're talking about putting them down there as well. Well, just who are we going to be um, putting under surveillance, and, and what is the intent here that we're going to be spending enormous sums of money to do this? And, and once again, we're the policemen of the world, and, and they say this is to fight al-Qaeda and to go after Kony, you know, but um, obviously this is just more expansion of the military-industrial complex and another chess piece on the grand chessboard. Well, it is, and also Northrop Grumman recently is lobbying Congress very heavily to sell drones for that they make for military purposes. They're lobbying to sell them for commercial use to other countries. And it's not going to be long before everyone is going to have these drones, and it makes us all less safe. Well, sure. Hey, well, let's talk about the privacy issues here at home because there's, you know, obviously a big, big concern from privacy advocates we reported in February that there was over 30 prominent watchdog groups that all band together and they petitioned the FAA demanding that they set rules and guidelines for these drones to protect our privacy and our safety. The American Civil Liberties Union, Bill of Rights, Defense Committee among these groups. But they, uh, you know, they asked for the agency to disclose where the drones are, who is currently flying them, and the FAA just uh, refused to disclose the information. Then they were forced to use the Freedom of Information Act, which they also ignored until they were sued for ignoring the Freedom of Information Act. Why do you think it's so difficult to get the FAA to disclose these records? What's up with that? Well, they don't want to talk because, uh, because of the agencies, the U.S. government agencies that are going to be flying the drones. They don't want to disclose that. They don't want to talk about the drones with the bombs and the drones that have, are going to surveil us um, under um, highly questionable uh, surveillance tactics and cameras. They're going to be taking photographs. They, they're very sophisticated. And also, they have handheld drones now. There was recent photographs showing that you could put on a small handheld drone, you know, three foot by two feet or something like this. But anyway, the size of the small drones, they can arm it with a machine gun. They can put cameras on it. It can hover. They can look in your windows. They can record your conversations. There's even drones the size of your hand that can fly up and attach themselves to a window or to a car and, and uh, go around and uh, 
follow you wherever you drive, listen to your conversations. And so there's no way to restrict this because people can make them or you can buy them off your supermarket shelves now because they're selling these drones, radio-controlled drones are easy to come by. And now we know which private companies and government entities that are flying over U.S. airspace. Because let's take a look at the list here. We've got Raytheon, General Atomics, Honeywell, of course, DARPA, the FBI, the Department of Energy, your friends over at the Department of Agriculture, the home, you know, Homeland Security, of course, all branches of the military. This is quite a list. It's a tremendous list, and it's going to get larger because you've got univer uh, universities are on the list now. You've got everyone wanting to fly these drones, and you're going to have air traffic congestion beyond belief. And, and also in the Boardman Range in Oregon, which the United States Navy is now trying to expand to make it bigger, um, they're going to be flying these armed drones over that area, and they've hired private contractors to conduct uh, surveillance activities. And what about the EPA? They were caught sending drones. Uh, they were spying on farmers in Nebraska and Iowa, so they're uh, you know utilizing these drones as, as well. I mean, the EPA now has drones, if you can imagine that. Hey, what do you think about this? How about this for a privacy concern? Many of these drone operations will actually have the ability to link facial recognition technology to surveillance drones and patch the information over to government databases. I mean, that sounds like something straight out of the movie Minority Report. Absolutely. Um, and, this, and, and see, this is where if you're outside, if you're demonstrating, if you're in your backyard sunbathing, I mean, there's going to be absolutely no privacy. We're going to become a police state, a surveilled police state. And this is why I question a recent poll which said, well, people approve of this. Well, the, the, the mantra is uh, from the people that make the drones, oh, well, they're going to help with firefighting and they're going to help with this or that. But I don't think that that's the real intent of the drone. I think that that's a cover for the real intent is to make us into a, uh, you know, a surveillance state, a police state. Well, absolutely. And, and the drone industry is forced to launch a massive propaganda campaign because, you know, Americans were now being bombarded with these slick and, and positive images of the, of the technology. But I've even got a quote here from Michael Toscano. He's the president of the Unmanned Vehicle Systems International. He told Salon Magazine that because there is a growing perception that drones are a threat to privacy and safety, that they plan on responding by repeating good words. This is his quote, you have to keep repeating good words. He added that the word drones is going to be replaced with the term remotely piloted vehicles. Now, that sounds harmless. Or unmanned vehicles is what they've been using. Yeah. Yes, but but they don't tell you they don't they aren't going to tell you who's doing this and why why they're up there and what they're doing, and with the state of cameras, with the state of um, our ability to um, see what's going on on the ground, follow people around GPS. I mean, this is this is a this is the door to a police state. I really believe personally. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Well, in closing, because we're running out of time, uh, we only have a short amount of time here tonight. In closing, what, what kind of warning uh, to other people? What are we doing to tell people about these drones that they may not be for our protection? How do we get the word out to everyone that this could very well be the establishment of a police state right here in the United States? Well, I think that the first thing we have to do is make the information available, which um, I have put on my website, for example, agriculturedefensecoalition.org. I have a war cost drone section up uh, with a lot of the available technology, the U.S. Navy and the U.S. Army drone ranges where they want to take over um, land that's owned by real people now in order to make drone ranges. And this is um, something that we have to know about, and we have to start educating people that there's other intent with this and that the number and scope is so tremendous that most people have no idea. Well, absolutely, Rosalind. Well, again, thank you for joining us. It was good to have you back on the show again. I encourage everybody to go to agriculturedefensecoalition.org website. 
wealth of information there and easily categorized. There's PDF files, there's videos, graphics. I actually went there the beginning of this week to do some research on geoengineering and then I saw that you had like over 600 PDF files on unmanned drones. So I've been combing through that information ever since and that's what actually got me to call you and, and ask you if you wanted to be on the show today. So check out the website. Thank you for joining us, Rosalyn, and I guess we shall meet again in the near future. I'm sure we'll have you back on soon. Yes, and thank you for having me on the show. It's always an honor uh, to be a guest on the show. All right, thanks again. Thank you. All right, and, uh, you know, it just occurred to me that I forgot to mention that um, we're talking about the propaganda campaign to sell the public on drones. Look what Rob Jacobson brought me back from the Bilderberg meeting in Chantilly. These are Homeland Security trading cards. I kid you not. And, um, whoa, right off the get-go, we have a U.S. Predator. Wow. It says here it's for U.S. Customs and Border Protection. And on the back, we have a phone number, kids, where you can report suspicious activity to Homeland Security. Well, I feel safer already. And here's a Guardian Predator. Well, they even have a Midnight Express Coastal Interceptor. I bet the Texas DPS would like to buy like six of these. They'd even pay, what do you think, Marcos? They'd pay like $600,000 for these, for each one? A piece. Did you get any of these? Um, I'll trade you. Do you have any, um, I'm, I'm actually looking for a Reaper drone. Do you have a Reaper drone? I'll tell you what, I'll give you two. Let me have you two for a Reaper. Oh, yeah, I got to have a Reaper drone. Thank you, sir. Oh, this is awesome. You rock. These are collector's editions, folks. Hey, the Reaper drone actually killed 50 people in one day in Pakistan, including a five-year-old girl. So definitely want to uh, hang on to these. Sorry, folks, I'm just being a little sarcastic, a little gallows humor. Obviously, there's nothing funny at all with unmanned drones equipped with Hellfire missiles killing innocent civilians in Pakistan or, for that matter, unmanned drones uh, taking away our right to privacy and uh, escalating the police state here at home. Um, that's going to do it for today, but we, uh, we have the quote of the day real quick. Let me just read this. This is from Ian Rand. Civ uh, excuse me. Civilization is the progress toward a society of privacy. The savage's whole existence is public, ruled by the laws of his tribe. Civilization is the process of setting man free from men. And thank you, John Bound, for bringing that quote to uh, our attention. Hey, uh, before we go, if we do the document cam one more time, this was sent to me by uh, a friend of mine who knew we were going to be covering drones Here's a little tiny helicopter, and here's one. It's a little bird. These are all being developed right now. In fact, I saw one today. You might want to look it up or Google it uh, if you guys have time in the future, those of you at home. It's a, uh, a drone the size of a mosquito. I am not kidding. And that's going to do it for tonight's broadcast. Be sure to join us again tomorrow evening, 7 o'clock p.m. Central Time. That's Texas time. And uh, we'll be back. I believe Alex Jones will be hosting tomorrow night. So come back and join us then. Until then, have a good night. And God bless you all.